Hello, welcome to Greenwood Bonsai Studio today. If you saw our last video a few days ago, I hinted to you a uh, little uh, couple of trees that I'll be working on in future were sort of Christmas trees from just budget supermarkets here in the UK. And I want to do this video for you uh, just as a basic video to show you if you're a big bonsai beginner what you can achieve quite quickly and for a low budget. At the moment in the UK and other areas in the world there's like a cost of living crisis all the electricity and gas has gone up a lot cost of fuel and that sort of thing so bearing that in mind we want to do a real sort of budget tree for you uh, just a styling of a young bonsai tree so if you're a beginner and you're just getting into bonsai then this next video we're doing today is going to will help you start your bonsai journey at a relatively uh, small expense at the moment now we're just coming up to Christmas and in a lot of the stores in the UK are selling this sort of material as ornamental Christmas trees in plant pots. So I found this for sale in the UK, it's in a Sainsbury supermarket and they were like the £10 so it's like $12 or something like that and you get a few um, dwarf spruce, this is an Omerica dwarf spruce and I just bought it the other day just to see what it was like see if we can make a bonsai out of it so initially there was they've got about 30 of these at the store and I just had a little look at them this looks like it's got a substantial trunk quite flexible branches and I thought there might be a bonsai somewhere in here and we can see if we can can bring it out and get a nice shape out of it and we're going to do this video in just real time I don't really want to start cutting away and coming back to the tree so we're going to start it from afresh take it all the way through the trimming wiring styling and the potting procedure perfectly okay to do all this on these types of trees at this time of year um, so the first thing with this tree we need to do is to take it out of the pot and have a look at the surface roots they can be potted quite deep so as an exploratory procedure just knock it out of the pot like that and get a root hook and just knock this soil off the top because we're, we're going to find a little bit more trunk down here look as we just work our way round let's just see if we can find here we go down here we've got quite a bit more trunk a few surface roots starting to come out here now they're a little bit high up let's see what we've got these will all be different right so with a little bit of exploratory uh, surgery there this is what we've got and we've got a lot of roots coming out high up these can just be taken off with a concave pruner and uh, this one's actually coming off from here and cutting across we can use a little brush just to tidy up like that there's another one here we don't want this top section trim this back so before we started this a couple of minutes ago the soil level was here and now we've found this we've uncovered another couple of inches of of, uh, of trunk and we've got a bit more of a surface root on this side so it's made the tree a little bit more defined already there's a root here that can come off just here just a little bit of tidying up like that okay no. so next thing just for ease of work I'm just going to wedge it back into the pot so I'm just going to put a little bit of soil under there and I'm just going to wedge it back into there just to stop it falling over just so we know we know what we're working with now we know where the base of the trunk is just like that so I'll just have a quick tidy up like that so next thing is to have a look at the tree from a design point of view so we've got quite a nice base here on this left hand side and then we've got quite a few decent branches on the tree my first job is I'm just going to work my way up the tree taking off little bits of fluffy growth that we don't need just real fine growth that's growing in the sort of nooks and crannies of the branches you know we've got a branch originating from the trunk and there's little bits of foliage growing around it so try and remove those we could also cut out any small bits of growth that we don't need flimsy growth we can pull out some 
old brown dead needles these down here a little bit too low and this one here this one here is too flimsy these are too small not really up to much so just let's get rid of those as we work our way up the tree just cleaning out some of this growth and this is also we can see the the structure of the tree and it gives it a little bit more definition Let's lift it down a little bit so we can work on the top of it just cut some of these sections out pulling the needles out with your fingertips they remove quite easily so this particular tree now we can see we've got something in front of us a bit more a bit more sensible it's a little bit a little bit too high on this turntable for me but if we have it if we look at the front of the tree the best view of this tree quite easily uh, no noticeable is this as a front towards you as a viewer this is obviously with this tree a nice front beautiful nice view of the trunk and the branches we've got ones to the left and to the right and to the back to give us some depth and perspective by comparison look if we turn it round this is more obviously the back and the rear of the tree it's more bushy and you can't see the tree you know it's a feature of the, sort of the tree don't look so so good so if we turn it back round we're gonna have a front somewhere in here uh, let's see we might we might deviate a little bit but let's for sake of argument say we're having a front just in here and we'll just trim we'll just make a little mark in the pot like that to remind us that that's the front so if I spin it back round to me we'll have a little look at the actual branches we've got a good strong branch you're looking at the front good strong branch here on the left but it's a little bit too long so I'm going to just shorten some of the strongest growing tips out and some of this long growth and we'll trim to a bud if you have a look here although this looks like one continual growth there's a bud here at the tip another one here another one here another one back in here so we can just go in with scissors on a slant like that and trim back to one of those buds so I'm going to keep this branch just here this one here is a bit close to it I'm not particularly keen on on that one so I'm going to keep this one remove this one use a branch cutter for that and keep this one to the back of the tree this one's a bit flimsy here so this one's shortening back always trying to shorten back this long growth and then the finer growth just nip it back a little bit as we get high up the tree taking back this longer this longer growth section in here trimming it back to get the more delicate growth like that let's have a little look at, at the top of the tree because that wants a dressing so as we're coming up here it's i'll try and trim it backwards that's going to come down like this so you're looking at the front this is a bit long this is a bit long that's going down a little bit too much at the back of the tree this one's shortening this one here is okay that's quite a woody branch but that's so that's okay a little one here at the front we don't need and then as we get to the top of the tree we've got a very heavy growth in here I'm going to reduce that heavy section back all together into here get rid of that really thick growth robustness at the top of the tree that we don't need and we'll make a top out of this section here there's a few pieces that want taken off the upper section of the tree and then I'm going to trim in to get a slightly more conical shape like this and just shorten some of this length back again taking out the heavy growth and then trimming those secondary shoots back to uh, next year's buds that we can quite clearly see like this a little bit here so with a little bit of pruning in a few minutes in we've got something that looks a bit more more tree like maybe even a bit more bonsai like than it did a while ago so next stage with this 
is to pop a little bit of bonsai wire on it, see if we can use some wire to shape and to train the tree, make it look a little bit more, more sensible, a little bit more pruning to do at the apex. There's a little knuckle that wants to be taken out in there, like that. So we're going to use some wire to shape and style this tree. So that's the next job to do. And I prefer to use aluminium bonsai wire because it's quick and easy to use. So I'm going to start here at the back of the tree and this wire is going to do this branch. So this section is going to hold on the back of the tree. It's going to come up and around, around again. This is going to come down onto this branch. And if you're right-handed, I'm using my right hand to move the to move the wire along the branch and using my left hand to move the foliage out of the way so as, far, as best we can we can wire between the foliage not trapping anything against the trunk and then the other end of this wire is going to come up into here like that and any excess length of wire we can just snip off once we get to the end of the branch and then we've done those two branches so next we're going to do this branch here it's going to be wired round to here onto this one always wire two branches with one piece of wire so if we can get 10 wire 10 wires on this tree potentially we're going to be wiring 20 branches with that it's the quickest easiest way to go back round to here and along this branch so those of you that are new to bonsai this material is ideal it's quite readily available at this time of year so you know they might they might sell them and call them Christmas trees but bonsai enthusiasts will look at these as as potential bonsai trees uh, it's a good way to get started I've even had customers over the years that have that probably bought they bought six bought six or seven of these trees and they've styled and wired all of them and they've then gifted them at Christmas to friends and relatives um, as a like, as a kind of handmade gift, you know, that they've done themselves, which is which is cool. And the advantage to the person doing them is that you get to practice on six trees, so you get a bit more, uh, a bit more. Uh, you learn more skills, and it gets a bit easier. You know, doing one of these trees. It's quite a rewarding process, quite creative, but once you've done, you know, once you've done a hundred of them, you can get the hang of it even a, even a little bit more. So we're just wiring along to these tips. At the moment, I'm not really bending these branches much. I'm really just getting the wire on them. So a little bit here. Once they're wired, we can shake the branches a little bit more. And at this stage of development and styling, I might leave the odd branch on here. I don't go too overboard with the styling of it, but I do try to get it into some sort of basic shape that we can uh, we can work on in the future, or its new owner can work on. We're trying to get these branches more horizontal or sweeping down. This is more reminiscent of a more mature older tree in nature and for those of you that haven't done any wiring before you know it's all very well putting this wire on the tree but you need to be aware it's on here so there's only two times the wire will harm the tree that's if uh, you're a bit ham-fisted when you put it on and you do any damage which you should you shouldn't do you should avoid or if you leave the wire on the tree too long so it's worth noting once the wire is on the tree don't leave it on too long that it starts to cut in remove it before that that happens so just bear that in mind and if you if you're careful putting the wire on and you remove it in good time it won't do any harm to the tree what it does it allows us to shape and position these branches so it basically makes the branches of this tree behave a bit a bit little bit like an artificial Christmas tree if you would so it will mean that these branches uh, we can move them into shape and once they're moved they'll stay set in that position 
Now, some trees have better uh, better memory than others. Some you put them into position, they take it quite well. Others can be a little bit more of a challenge. But the general thing is that it will allow us to shape and style these branches. And if we can bring them down slightly more weeping, more horizontal, like a mature tree in nature, it will make this tree just look a little bit older and better looking. So that's the idea behind it. Of course, some of you, you might just get a tree like this and trim it and not bother doing the wiring thing, the wiring procedure, but it will slow you down in the shaping and the development of it because you won't be able to get it into quite as good shape than if you, uh, if you did wire it. Just a couple more bits of wire to put on this I think and then we'll have a go at positioning these branches so a little bit around here it's inevitable we trap a few needles against these young branches but I'm trying to minimize it if I can obviously if you're doing this and you've got more time on your hands you can spend a bit more time just um, working your way through the branches removing a few of the older needles but it is quite a, a laborious task, a little bit time consuming. Just wiring a few of these secondary branches now. Just a little one here. See whether we need to wire any others. We might manage with that. So let's lift it up back onto the turntable now. So now this tree is fully wired, but we haven't positioned any of the branches. So the next thing is to see if we can position some of these and make them into a better shape. So I'm gonna bring, first of all, and start at the top with this bring this top up into here and this piece across this front this section is going to come down here and we'll start working on some of these heavier branches quite flexible these dwarf spruce which is a, a blessing and a curse it means that when you bend the branches they do give quite well and flex but the disadvantage with that is that they sometimes forget where they're supposed to be so they've got a habit of kind of, of springing up a little bit as well there's just a secondary branch on this low branch that needs wiring and I'll just drop a little piece of wire on that so these trees came about because I was off doing a well a demonstration the other night a, a bonsai society and I nipped around the corner to the store and uh, I seen these for sale and I was doing a demonstration on uh, on evergreen bonsai styling and uh, I thought these were a good cost effective tree for people to work on particularly people that are on a budget or, or just starting out the bonsai path and I bought one and I shaped it and styled it at the demonstration and went down quite well it, it made quite a nice tree I'll show you in a little while so I thought I'd do the same uh, as a YouTube video so that you get to see one as well and despite the fact that I'm lucky enough to work on some top class specimen trees you know a nice you can't beat a, the creative aspect of a little sort of half an hour fiddle about with something like this just to generate a new bonsai you know, it's down to to bonsai practitioners and people like myself not just to work on existing trees but to, to be producing trees to be producing trees for future generations and bonsai uh, bonsai hobbyists so it's not necessarily what the tree looks like today but it's what it's going to look like in 10 or 20 years time once it's passed few through a few uh, a few owners so here now look we've wired it down I'm just going to do a little bit of pruning on some of these long tips if I just spin it around here so I can just see it from the front just briefly just like this this wants to come back a little bit just shorten some of these back and these will bud out in spring from these buds that we're trimming back to so most of these we can go around the tree just shorten them back 
and because they grow like this you know I'm not just cutting across them if you've got across something like this you'll sever maybe six or seven needles so the way I tend to do it is I always go in with a fine pair of scissors and you cut it at an angle like this so you're probably only severing one or two or sometimes none at all so although obviously I do it at quite a quite a rate of speed people think you know you can watch it and think oh it looks like he's just hacking at it I'm quite precise but I am also fairly quick at doing it the first few you do it will take you a lot longer to do the more you do the quicker you'll get that wants to come off just there this section here so now we've got it trimmed let's get it potted up so easy this should be because we've already done some of the root work haven't we so although we've got quite a quite a depth of plant pot we've not got too much depth of root we've got a few crossing roots and as a field grown tree that isn't grown for bonsai that's not that's a real nice fibrous compact root system and I've not really cut many off at all I've got a few stragglers off the top and that was about it but we've managed to go from this depth of plant pot down to this really quite easily so I was thinking of putting this into a training pot normally go into something like this but I think to be honest because this is so shallow I'm just going to go into the shop and we'll get a shallower pot to put it into um, rather than put it into something with this depth ordinarily these don't always come out as shallow so I'd go to like a halfway pot like this I and mean, if you're on a budget this is going to be the thing you're wanting to do because these pots are like £10, £8 something like that but this is quite a nice tree it's got a shallow depth I'm just going to go in the shop and rummage up a ceramic pot to put it into so I've just nipped into the shop next door and found an unglazed ceramic pot rectangle with just indented corners that should be just right for us and we'll get a little piece of mesh and we'll get some wire I'm just going to pop a little wire into the bottom of the pot that's going to secure the tree into the pot just use two millimeter wire for that and then over the wire we just pop the mesh like that so that's going to stop the soil falling out the wire is going to hold the tree in position so let's just lift the tree down like that. get the pot up there nice and ready for the tree now this tree the front of it was in here to me so if I spin it round to you this is going to be the front so positioning of it within the pot it's one of the hardest things to teach in bonsai and it's also therefore something that people get quite wrong the idea of this wants to be just about here between a third and and, uh, and half the way along the pot and the direction of this tree is from right to left you're looking at the front so can you see that that's right can you see that that's wrong can you see that if we put it in the middle straight up it's just a bit boring and this is too imaginative yeah so somewhere between those I want to be about there just like that so we need some compost so we're just going to use our basic bonsai compost for this and uh, we're going to pop some of that in the bottom of the pot because we need to raise the tree up a little bit because surprisingly it has got quite a shallow root system we've got rid of most of the field soil that it was around the roots so if we get it just like that and hold it in position with his hand and we'll just pop the soil in the compost leave the wire for now as well a lot of people are always in a hurry to get it wired in but if you wire it in that's the last job you do so like this firm it in quite a gritty compost that we use so it can be fairly hard for firming it into the pot like that just tidy it up uh, and this wire that secures the tree in just needs to come across the back of the root system never ever send it around the trunk or anything like that just purely over the root system this end is going to come up to meet it at a right angle we're going to hold the tree in position we're going to grab that with our bonsai pliers we're going to pull and then twist and then pull and then twist like that this is to secure the tree into the pot so that um, 
this is an outdoor tree so if it goes back outside tomorrow and it's windy it won't blow out the pot or if a, if a fat pigeon lands on it it won't just knock it out of the pot or anything like that so we'll just tidy that up we've got a little bit of acadama just going to put that on the soil surface just as a top dressing just for a change just to neaten it up you like the look of that nice tone against the tree and then a little bit now it's in the pot a little bit of tweaking there's a little uh, little branch a secondary branch here can you see from the front this one here is a little bit of a nuisance just growing up see if we can't just pop a little bit of wire on that just to get him down into here like that just tuck it in there we're happy with that one bring this one forward a little bit a little bit more pruning here the top needs to develop a little bit more that will that will soon fill out so not too worried about that so like I said before I just picked one of these trees up the other night before a demonstration and then I bought a second one on my way to work the other day from a local store and the £10 in the UK so it's like $12 or something if you can find similar material in the States if you're watching from there and uh, I'll show you the other one that I did as a demonstration this was the one that I did the other night at the Bonsai Society demo so these are both from the same sort of material this one just did go into a training pot it could have gone into a shallower pot but I didn't have one to hand and then this one was put into a shallow pot don't forget we've got to put some lac balsam on those cuts just to uh, just to hide these wounds uh, I'm not sure where it's gone at the moment We've had a tidy up and now we can't find anything but we will put some wound sealant onto these cuts and it's just a quite just a nice little short demo yeah if you're on a budget or you're new to bonsai you know if you go in doing your your festive shopping soon have a look at this sort of material that gets offered at supermarkets and stores you might get a few strange looks when you start having a rummage through it and having a look at the trunks but it's worth spending five minutes having people look at you a little bit weird in the store just so you can pick a nice tree that you can do something with you know I really enjoy this sort of initial styling with bonsai I don't get bored of doing it even though I've been doing bonsai for many many years and it just shows you what we can achieve for minimal cost and also minimal time we've been half an hour or so doing this demonstration from start to finish you've not got a stop a stopwatch on so if you're doing it yourself and it takes you all afternoon it doesn't matter what does matter you enjoyed it and you've created a new bonsai from readily available inexpensive material and uh, if you've liked this please give us a like and subscribe and uh, put a comment on if you like and uh, thank you very much for watching the video take care